Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Tracklist. I am Darren Jenkins. And I'm Chris Saunders. On this week's podcast, we are doing The Color of Money, um, directed by Martin Scorsese, uh, written by Walter Tevis and Richard Price, starring Paul Newman, Tom Cruise, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, and music by Robbie Robertson with a budget of 14.5, um, box office of 52.3. Fast Eddie teaches a cocky but immensely talented protege the ropes of pool hustling, which in turn inspires him to make an unlikely comeback. Uh, yeah. I hadn't watched this movie in a long time, and now I know why. I never saw it. And I didn't realize that this was literally a, what, 20, 20 year, 30 year uh, sequel of The Hustler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I, which I haven't seen either. So now I kind of want to stop this podcast now. Let me go watch The Hustler and, and then we can re bring it back. Yeah, you know? yeah technically, we probably should have did that. Because, <laughs> um, but you know, it's funny because I've never seen the movie, but I've heard of it. And like, I'm watching this movie and like Paul Newman pool player this is like the hustler <laughs> this is like saying yeah, I think it's my stuff. <laughs> like what the hell yeah um I, didn't, I wasn't sure Paul Newman is it but I was pretty sure um and then like yeah I was just going through the IMDB trivia and it's like at one point in the film Eddie comments that it has been 25 years since he last played in real life 25 years since the hustler so um that 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 made me figure it out yeah, they did a lot of alluding to the hustler in this movie, um, either indirectly or directly. So, well, apparently they wanted to get uh, Jackie Gleason, yeah, in this in this movie in the sequel because he played uh, Fats Minnesota That's Fats in the original. Minnesota, yeah, uh, but he uh, he just didn't think it fit. Yeah, uh, for, uh, I'm trying to. Yeah, I think he would have been pretty old by that point, too. So yeah. that would have been kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I could have done it, but, you know. So have you seen The Hustler? Oh, yeah. So was that, was that, is that like a classic? Is that considered a classic? Oh, yeah. Since, since I've heard of it, it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. So now I'm, I'm a little upset now because I did not know that going in. And I wish I had watched it. So you want, you want to get those fields, right? You want to connect all the dots and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was, it, yeah. I, I mean, I I knew that it was, but I kind of spaced but, on that because I haven't seen Hustler in a while either. Yeah, you just decided not to tell me, yeah. Um, yep. And so what would you, if that's considered a classic, uh, what do you consider this one? Because this is kind of the opposite. So let me just go through. IMDb gives it 7 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes with the critics gives it 88%. Uh, the audience gives it 73. I feel like that's probably about right for the first time in a long time. Because um, as I'm watching this movie, I I mean, you know what it is, I think, because we've, we've kind of – been living with an older Tom Cruise for so long now <laughs> that seeing this younger Tom Cruise, he is really an asshole in this movie. And, well, dude, you yeah. know. I mean, first of all, I would have assumed that this movie was before Top Gun and Risky Business. And it Just looking at how 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 young he looks and the way he's acting. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, it's well before risky business and right around the same apparently they were doing reshoots for top gun around the same time he's so yeah. young yeah man and like yeah definitely agree with you he's acting like a dick i would say that he's oh he overplays it in this movie a little bit yeah and then when i'm looking up these these dates and everything for these movies i scroll up and i see tom cruise was in young guns as a henchman who was shot off the roof uncredited oh what yeah, <laughs> it was on IMDb. I assume it's true, but like, huh. what? He was already hot by this point. Well, he was, he was prepping his stunt career, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, 
And then off the bat, like this didn't feel like a Scorsese film to me. Um, mm. And and then one of the IMDb trivia uh, trivia pieces was Martin Scorsese had said he mainly did this as an insistence on at the insistence of Paul Newman that it wasn't a personal picture and he was more or less a hired gun on this. So if I get that feeling, I, I I'm guessing that's why. Right. Well, um, for me, it felt like he used his trademark, like these zoom in shots a, a lot, you know, like he did with, mm -hmm. um, um, with, uh, uh, the God, not God, the God, um, I'll born in the 4th of July. He does all these zoom ins and these pain shots and these swinging, the swinging camera shots and stuff. Oh, there's definitely that one scene uh, when Paul Newman, who plays Eddie, is in, where is he? Is he in a pool hall and the camera is just spinning around him and he's following it with, so he's turning with the camera, facing the camera. I was like, yeah. If that's Scorsese like, then yes, it's in there. <laughs> he did that in the Untouchables as well. So um, very much uh, like he he put his signature on it. Although I would say to your point, yeah, early on in the movie, it it was it felt different. It felt like mm. this was like a different movie and not really a Scorsese product. And we don't really get Scorsese until a little bit further in the movie. So, and I mean, well, he's the the narrator in the beginning of the film, right? I, I don't know if that was his decision. Like, is is so? If it's not a personal picture for him, is this? Is he not a pool fan? Is he not a like you know, this industry or what? Whatever you want to call it, this way of life. And then why did he decide to be the one to do the voiceover? Like that feels like a personal touch, right? Yeah. Um... I'm just trying to look back at some of his previous films. I mean, be honest, he's, I mean, so I don't want to jump ahead a little bit, but I did have a question that I wanted to pose to you since you play basketball. Um, this has been labeled as a sports movie. And I'm got to ask you, is, is, is this a sports movie? Because if it is, it's totally outside of Scorsese's wheelhouse. And if it isn't, then um, why in the world would they call it? I mean, I guess they kind of call pool a sport, but... So, man, yeah, this was a whole um, debate about, uh, what was it? Was it poker? You mm, know, when, when they yeah, had, yeah. like, the World Series of Poker on ESPN? Um, and ESPN, you, you associate with sports. Um, yep. And there was a whole debate about that. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the mental. I mean, at least pool has a physical aspect to it. Like, I don't right. know if it's like the the mental stress you put yourself under when you're playing poker. And in that case, is that the same thing for? Oh, well, actually, sometimes they have spelling bees on ESPN, right? And is that the yeah. same thing for a chess? So, so yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's like a lot of like there's mental capacity needed for pool too, right? Like angles, geometry. All that, like you know, I mean, he's strategy. did raging bull. I mean, to me, to me, that's a sports movie more than, mm -hmm. than this. But yeah, I, I don't want to offend any. I, I guess it just depends on your definition of sport, right? Yeah, I don't want to offend any pool. I want any people come up to me with a pool cue trying to show me what like you know. like like uh, Vincent's character in this movie, yeah. where he's <laughs> doing like the martial arts stick fucking yeah. bow staff move. I, that that was weird. That was it was so Tom Cruise though. I mean, that's seriously I was like all, all all that was missing was a dude from Scientology in the background. Um oh, there's there's a there's a trivia piece about that. Uh oh. Um I, I don't remember the exact I kind of passed it over. I didn't think it was important, but since you brought up Scientology, one of the pool halls that they used is supposed to be in based in uh oh my god, why is this? Uh, Atlantic City. Yep. Um, but a lot of the pool halls they use were in Chicago. And I think one of them that they use still exists well, as of 2015 and is across mm. the street from a Scientology, the Church oh. of Scientology. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So of which, 
Yeah, of which uh, Tom Cruise is quite involved in. Well, I mean, we won't go down that road, but apparently he's he split from the church. So mm-hmm. apparently, so I, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, which is kind of too little, too late, but whatever. But, but you you did set the tone saying you understand why you didn't watch this movie. So before we get into any more bashing, yep. And didn't know that he did win for this, but Paul Newman, I love him yeah. in this movie. Absolutely yeah, he love was, him in this movie. He's, he, he's really good in this movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen a lot of films with him. Um, the, the Sting is one that I own and I, that I really like. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's, he's good in that too. But, like, I really liked him in this. I don't know if I would say this is my favorite film by him. Well, that's a tough question. That's a good question. We, we may have to revisit that at the end of this mo- at the podcast. I, I, I got it. I got it. Oh, cool hand, Luke. Uh, Bush casting the Sundance Kid. Still, I still would say this might be my favorite performance. Of mm. Hustler. Well, since you haven't seen Hustler, I, yeah. I would I would add Hustler as probably one of my favorite. Um, but. Butch and Sundance is probably mm. like literally just right, right there. Um, and for a lot of people who probably haven't even watched this movie, but it's um, the, um, Towering Inferno. I mean, I gotta have, I gotta add, add him to an action movie, and uh, he was good in that. Damn, this guy goes back though, man. He goes back to the fifties, oh, to the forties. Mm-hmm. Nineteen forty-nine TV series in the Ad- Aldrich family. I thought it was the Adams family, Aldrich family. So but, I, I probably don't, I don't. I probably don't have enough basis to make that comment. But it is like the be- his best performance. But the best performance I've seen him in, I might say, is this film. I tell you what, the eighties. Well, he was crushing in the eighties. I mean, he was. Yeah. The Verdict, which was really good, Color of Money, um, Glass Menagerie, Fat Man and Little Boy, which is basically about the, the atomic tests, and uh, um, Blaze was actually pretty decent. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking you said Fat Man and Little Boy. I'm just thinking Fat Man and a Little Sure, What was that? Chris <laughs> Farley? Oh, God. Uh, Black Sheep. Black Sheep, yeah. Sorry, so I, I, I digress. Um, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so really loved, I mean, you know, I talk about subtlety all the time. I think he might be a master of it, if, if not in his whole career in this film. Um, I, you, you see that with like the manipulation he, manip- manipulating he does earlier in the film to kind of figure out uh, Vincent and, and, and obviously guide him in the direction he wants. So yeah, mm. really like that. Uh, but the, but his mind games uh, definitely make me anxious as fuck in this in this movie. Yeah, he's um, he really like this is this is kind of like like I I could have seen him in Ocean's Eleven. Mm-hmm. Like he had a level of manipulation that was pretty much on that level. Where I mean, you just knew everything he said was was true from a certain point of view, but, mm-hmm. you know, but he had ulterior motives all, you know, throughout most of this early, early part of this movie. Yeah, I, that's an apt um, point there, the, uh, the Ocean's Eleven part. I'm like, mm. I wish I had a bigger soundtrack because I want to do that. Yeah. And that's the, that'll be our final question. <laughs> yeah, that would be, oh, yeah. Could Paul Newman be in this film, and what role would he make it better? <laughs> oh, that actually might have to add him. Might have to add Ooh, him. I don't know. Um, I did have a question, though. Hmm. Why the fuck is this girl half naked or naked in this movie all the time? Laying in a bed with her under on. <laughs> <laughs> well... Like, I, 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 can, I can see where Vincent's coming from when he's getting pissed at her, man. She just like men walk into the hotel room. She just got her top off and the back. Just things half naked. I'm like, put some clothes on, woman. Yeah, she she was uh, she was a handful. And uh, I 
I had a question about this too, and maybe this, may, or maybe I'll save it to later. No, I'll save it to later. Never mind. Carry on. Um, yeah, she, she spent way too much time, um, you know, without her clothes on, and I'm not sure if it was needed. Like, I'm not sure, like, what the, like, how Scorsese justified that situation i'm like yeah because like obviously vincent's a jealous guy very um eddie kind of impl like implants that thought in his head like she's she's on her way out like she's she's bored um but you get that enough with him implanting that thought yep. exception and then also like when they're at the pool hall and he's like grabbing her ass and stuff right like right i get the point already like having her i mean the whole point of that was like we're business people this is part of the business like it's right. an act but like when they're by themselves in the hotel room you don't need to do that so right I, i'm just trying to figure out if this we don't get a lot of backstory on carmen or vincent yeah we don't know much about them at all they just show up yeah and, you know yeah so i'm just trying to figure out okay is she like is she a slut or is she just <laughs> is she just a exhibitionist or she's just i don't know like i don't have enough information so that that's that's probably what throws me off well which brings to another question then why haven't we seen um a third piece of this puzzle with a follow-up with this to this movie with tom cruise being the older one and taking on a mentor or a mentee i mean it's not too late yeah. Let's see. We got The Hustler, The Color of Money. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the sequel is. Although I think the first two were actually books, right? Yeah, they were. So maybe they just don't have any source material to run off of. But, you know. That never stopped and, Hollywood. Yeah, but you know what? Like, they tend to remake films yeah. as opposed to, you know, create something, I, I hate to say this, but completely creative and new, right? these days so i don't know that's i don't know if they, i don't know if they have it in, have it in them that's um, so that was yeah it, that was one thing that bothered me was like the lack of backstory um and we've talked about this with other films and and that's that clearly makes this film about eddie not even though tom cruise is the young up-and-comer he's not the star paul newman's the right. star <laughs> right yeah which is um like, as I'm watching the movie, that was actually my question, like, almost from the beginning. Like, why, you know, why this guy wasn't playing more, you know? I mean, but then, like, I get, I guess that comes into that's That's where we should have watched The Hustler first. Yeah. Kind of, I just don't know if there was something at the end of that film. Because he, he talks about something. I forget someone putting i don't know the the voodoo on him or something and i don't know if that was just in between movies or it actually happened in the hustler so now i have to go back well no it gives you something to do on the weekend uh yeah because i i have all the time in the world um <laughs> yeah so that was that's a very <sighs> i feel like i'm missing something I'm not prepared for this podcast. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, the, the one thing I'll say about this movie is that it was created, um, and maybe this is the book's doing, where you technically should watch The Hustler, but you don't have to watch The Hustler. Like they, they made this, they gave you the story that you, in a way that if you didn't see it, you weren't necessarily missing like a major piece of the puzzle um but if if you are like us who have who ask questions um then yeah you might want to see the hustle so. yeah yeah this is only because you know if this was someone who was a teenager in 1987 whenever this was made right. like you you probably be none the wiser right but like, yeah, I'm 40. It's the 2020s. <laughs> and I had heard of the hustler and like kind of put the piece together. But then, yeah, now we're doing now we're like, OK, now we're researching. We're asking questions. So 
yeah, yeah. Listen, that's not going to affect like the the watchability of this film. It's just for me. It's a personal thing. Mm. Mm. I'm beating beating myself up about it. But um, so yeah. I mean, we don't have a. That's who we should have on the show. Professional pool player. We should have on the show. Ooh, that'd <laughs> be we, cool. Because we don't have like that eye right now. Right. From my perspective, like the first hustle was believable. Where. You know, you, you you lose a little bit and then raise the stakes and then like then you take them out. Um, but then the second one, when Vincent puts on the nerdy glasses and he's like really oh. overplaying it, like I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. I was like, oh my god, that's like yeah. Billy Hoyle. That's like Billy Hoyle dressing up like a scrub and white man can't jump. <laughs> which which yeah. is, is here's a final. Uh, I'm gonna add a final question. No, okay. is, is, is white man can't jump the the hustler or color of money of the actually that for was basketball. A, that, yeah for basketball. Uh, Nobody's yeah, teaching. There, there's no teacher student relationship in that one. No, but I think it might have. It, it, it kind of uh, mimics that um, the the grifter life, you know. Yeah. Speaking of the grifter life, um, that kind of leads and kind of leads to my point about the mo- uh, the soundtrack, mm. which is uh, some some of the songs kind of felt like okay, yeah, you go into a pool hall, like this is definitely what you're hearing. Right. Um, I, I there's some in particular more than others. Um, I can still hear like you know Eric Clapton and Mark Knopfler, but like the blues, more of the blues stuff. Right. Um, I'll be like, oh yeah, you walk into a pool hall and they got some blues yeah. playing, a bunch of grifters, like, yeah. Very, trying, very trying to gritty. hustle each other. Yeah. Which is weird. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how like we want to dive into the music, but um there was a Phil Collins tune in there, and it's not on the soundtrack, which is weird. Um well, it's on this the the IMDB list of soundtrack. And uh, another one I found, mm. I don't know about the official, but again, like, you know, we, we talked about, especially movies from probably the 80s and 90s, where you would buy the soundtrack, they wouldn't put every single song that played in the film. Yeah. They would just put the ones that are like, I don't know, that they think you would like. Um, but this one also does um, another thing from like older soundtracks is they include some of the scoring in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is cool. Like I think about like a, a soundtrack that I grew up with that I love for teen- from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like you have some of the scores, and they're in between the selected songs, the, the super music supervised songs. There's some good stuff on the. There's some good stuff on this soundtrack. Uh, I was like, I like the way they used the music. Like it was almost, it was there, but it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. It I think was this kind of like a music second the second movie we've done where they it was kind of like a really good way to use the music. Well, it it, it wasn't the star, right? Right. Um, we're not talking about a, a music a biopic where the music is like up front and center, and we're not talking about even like into the Spider Verse where you can really hear the music and it really pushes the action. This right. is like a lot of this. Most of this, like I'm looking at the what they've listed on IMDb. I yeah. don't remember 80, 75 percent of these songs playing. So it was a lot of background <laughs> stuff at the pool halls, at bars, just in the background. Yeah, doing stuff in bars are great because it's the best way. It's a great way for you to add music to the movie without it being too overwhelming. It can just be this thing in the background that. You, Kind of adds accent, you know. So I feel like it's almost like in this in this case, it's the difference between a track list and the soundtrack, which I think in some degrees is different. You know what I mean? I like it. Do you see, do you see how we did that, folks? How we pulled the name of the podcast in there because we are actually <laughs> more interested in the track list, the actual right. songs that show up like appear in the movie versus the official soundtrack. So. Right. Well, well, well done, sir. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, I'll drop the mic later. Doom, doom. Uh, 
God, I'm on fire. Uh, I wish you were. Um, so uh, I, I forgot to mention, like when they, um, when he's in the glasses and like looking really nerdy, they, they, mm -hmm. over, they really overdid. It. I don't know if that's from like a book or something or some source material. He also like scratches the ball, the cue ball off the table. Oh, like like something you like wouldn't go into a pool hall and bet money like you wouldn't that would you wouldn't do that like that that's a tell for me that's be like yeah clearly this guy is about to come back and kick my ass <laughs> like, <laughs> right so I, yeah I, I do have my gripes with the way they did executed some of this yeah yeah I mean um... it's it's it's, it's kind of like the um fucking Casino Royale with the final the final uh hand in the Texas Hold'em match, just oh. so over the top. Like, yeah, like, what was it? It was like a straight, straight flush, royal flush, four of a kind, all in one hand. Like, oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's a little. It, it, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, I don't know how much how, how much you've gone into like pool halls where you've like. Um, where, where you've gotten stuff like that going on. I've been to one or two places. I actually dated a girl who was a professional pool player and without me knowing at the time. And uh, she went in there and hustled, hustled this, these four dudes like while we were on a date. And I was just like, what, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like she was hitting stuff. Like it was like this move, like you, like, Get the fuck out of here. Well, that was it. Apparently, uh, all but one shot Tom Cruise actually did in this movie. Of course he did. Because yeah. even back then, he was doing his own stunts. I mean, like, I... That's probably the main reason I would become an actor. Is just to learn all of these super, superfluous, like, skills. And to yeah. Pool, darts, martial arts, like... All this stuff that you like, you learn and prep for each film, and like clearly he got pretty good at it. That's that's a reason enough to become an actor. Yeah, yeah. You can ride a horse, shoot basketball, fly a jet plane, climb a mountain. I'm like, fuck. Well, I probably not. I'm not gonna climb the mountain or fly. A <laughs> Tom Cruise can have all that. Um, well, speaking of speaking of which, I found this in the in the trivia. So I'm going to just say this verbatim. Mm -hmm. Creators of an up-and-coming software company were looking for a name for their revolutionary video game. They got it from the scene in which Tom Cruise walks into the pool hall and is asked what's in what's in the case and he's uh, that he's carrying. Do you remember what his answer is? Uh, no. Mo what? Do Doom. Oh. They got the name of that game from this from, movie yeah. oh good gravy <laughs> yeah all right i mean okay that's cool <laughs> anyway um well, i got a question we? for you well go for it i'm, I'm just kind of moving along with the film here um Actually, this is just a general question. What hmm. the fuck is up with Tom Cruise's Bruce Lee sounds in this movie? <laughs> right? Like, if we had some background, uh, character <laughs> backgrounds here, like, we might understand that shit. Like, maybe he takes martial arts. Like, maybe he is, or he's a big Bruce Lee fan, but we have nothing to work off of. So it's just out of the blue. The whole the Bruce Lee sounds, the spinning of the cue stick and all that yeah. Yeah, it was not a it's not a Yeah, I was I was so annoyed by him to be honest in that scene. Like I re like I forgot for a second that I was watching a movie and I almost turned it off cuz I thought it was a TV show and I'm like, "Ah, fuck, fuck that. Let's see what else is on." Oh, wait. I got to watch this shit. That was so over the top. And but it also I was like, "All right, I mean, he looks like he's thirteen, so whatever. It's I, I like I'm like thinking now, like okay, I get it, right? Like Eddie is the seasoned pool shark, right? 
Vincent's this young hotshot, and they maybe went over the top to like make it more believable that Eddie's gonna pull him, like you know, straighten him out, focus him, like reel him in. Yeah. So they're opposite ends of the spectrum, but like s- still, that was definitely a creative choice by Tom Cruise to like do that kind of stuff. I don't think he was directed to do that. Yeah, no, this is. I feel like that was right up there with him jumping on Oprah's couch, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I saw. I was watching this movie, and like, I'm just like, so this motherfucker was just always like that. I thought like it just he, he became crazy one day, <laughs> but but he was that was just me. I, I, you know what, though? I, I kind of get it because if you think about it, right, back when he first broke into the industry, which was young, mm-hmm. he probably was this good looking little kid with all this energy, just like this boundless energy. And they're like, yeah, we want this dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, that makes you stand out in an audition like that. So, yeah, well. Maybe and maybe it's just hindsight. Maybe back in 1987, I would have enjoyed this, but or maybe he has ADHD. I don't know. Well, he definitely does. Um, you know what popped in my head while I'm watching this? Hmm. How did they get to all these pool halls? How'd they find them uh, in the 80s without Google Maps or MapQuest? Or, or, or not? They didn't know MapQuest in the 80s. I said no. I said oh, or, or, or. oh, I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> At least MapQuest. <laughs> um, well, because, Eddie, because Eddie they, they MapQuest, right? Yeah, but, but right, he, but the first one they go to like is now like a storage facility or like some laundry room, right? Right. <laughs> and they start cracking on him. Well, that's um, how long he's been out of. Yeah, it was kind of. I mean, that's an improbability in a lot of ways, right? I mean. How long is he? he said? Twenty five years it's been since he put he he. Mm-hmm. So, how many places you know are going to be open for like? I mean, I was looking at pictures of some of the bars that you played in, like, and it's not been twenty five years, and a bunch of those are, are closed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's been it's been thirteen. Yeah. So. Halfway there. Um. I mean. I don't know. I can't. I can't remember who you mentioned in the uh, in the cast list, <laughs> but I was very surprised by a couple folks. Oh yeah, there were. I didn't mention everybody because I know there are a bunch of like people that are in this movie that deserve to be recognized because they are like legends of their own. So I mean, John Turturro. Yeah, uh, you mentioned, but like, he, I mean, I, I I think he's. I don't know if he's underrated. He'll he should or I don't even know if he's got a lifetime achievement award yet, but he should. Who's that? John Tachuro. Uh I don't think so. He that should. Dude, that dude. I mean, he's a like at the very least, he should be he should be um recognized as one of the greatest New York actors. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think of New York, you think of him. For sure. It's just like he's just like not a lead guy, but the talent is yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, he's, he's a like, great character actor. Yeah, he can do anything. Um, and then I just know, re- recognize one guy, Bill Cobbs, because uh, one of my mm. favorite favorite movies is uh, Demolition Man. <laughs> he's in that. Oh movie. yeah. Um, and then like Bruce A. Young, I don't know if you ever watched The Sentinel in the nineties. Oh yeah, of course. So Bruce A. Young is in that one. I don't know if he, he plays a partner or the, the chief or whatever Thank of the main so. character. Yeah. He's in that. Uh, I- Iggy Pop is in this movie. I feel like Iggy Pop pops up into like these re- like regular throughout the 80s in different movies. Yeah. Well, I don't I mean, I don't think he really did much. He's kind of like Flea. Flea does that as well. Flea. Um, but most importantly, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. I mean, he was so young. Yeah. I mean, I knew he was a fucking hustler from the get. So he was good in this in that in that moment he was on the screen too, boy. Yeah. So Eddie, Eddie if I saw it, Eddie should have seen it. <laughs> so are you a hustler? Are you a hustler? Mm-hmm. Are you a hustler? <laughs> um 
but yeah, he, he's great in this role. Like, I think that that's even before. That must is it before uh, Bloodsport, right? Bloodsport is nineteen ninety. Yeah, he's definitely before before Bloodsport. Blood Sport. Yeah, he looks a lot younger in this. Yeah, so I was like, oh snap, Floris, Ghost Dog, Ghost Dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, so shout out to Forrest because because I want to. Um, oh, yeah. and then the scene after that, so like, uh, he hustles Eddie, hmm. and then Eddie has like a breakdown, like, I should have fucking seen that shit. And he's like, and then he like, he quits on uh, Vincent and Carmen. That scene in the stairwell, I, I actually really like that scene. Oh, yeah, 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 that was a good scene. Where he's yeah. like, he's just essentially abandoning them. They're like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, he's like, I've, I've taught you everything. Like, that display I just put on, getting my ass kicked, that's the last lesson, right? Which I assume is don't underestimate anybody. Yeah. Um, and then and he leaves them. And I, yeah, I really like that scene. Yeah, that was a good scene. And, uh, you know, it really set the stage for what was coming next. Um, yeah. I, I do have to rewind because there's a scene before that where uh vincent plays this guy grady who's supposed to like, be the best pool player in wherever mm. and his he lets his ego get the best of him instead of like tanking the whole all the games he starts coming back and you know playing well and there's actually a i think around when he's almost about to blow it there's a guitar plays in the background and i immediately thought like lethal weapon we talked about this yeah year. I would have been like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was before the Forest Whitaker scene, but I want to mention it because uh, we do have some uh, Eric Clapton in the soundtrack. So, and he did, and he did that. He was uh, did was part a partner on the score for *Lethal Weapon*. Um, and this leads me to my next episode of *So Hold Up*. So. Vin, um, Eddie ditches Vincent and Carmen, and, and and then he goes swimming and gets his eyes tested. <laughs> I don't, I, was it in that specific order? I mean, uh, yeah, he swam and then he got his eyes tested, and then we go into this like Rocky training montage where he's like with his pool cue, where you know, he's, he's he's like playing a bunch of people in pool. Pool. He even goes like this old folks home, I think. He beats yeah. his old lady. That's weird. That was a yeah, little I, weird. I mean, he's, he's, he goes, starts from the beginning, right? Builds himself back up. I get it. But I don't see where the swimming and the eye, eye test come into play. Yeah. Um, that was, I mean, I get what they were trying to do there. It was It's just, and, and thus, my, thus my original question is, is this, this a sports, sports movie? Oh, he had to he had to swim some laps to get to prepare for the pool table. So, oh, <laughs> oh, I get it. Swimming in a pool, playing pool. I see what they there did. There you go. Uh, I see what they done did there. He's okay. Doing pool to improve on pool. <laughs> <laughs> then he got in the car pool. Uh, uh, oh God. It's, it's habitual habitual line stepper, Darren. That's right. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I mean, it, it was it's an interest. It's interesting how this film is put together, where you have the like like we said, like the veteran pool shark taking on the young gun, teaching him, and then like if this was Karate Kid, right? That's Mr. <laughs> Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi and whatever, you know, he would just train him and and he would win this tournament. What they did here is he trains him, he bounces, and then and tries to kick his ass. Yeah, so that I found that interesting. Um, oh, that would have been a really good thing for for Karate Kid. This is Miyagi coming back and shooting <laughs> Daniel's ass. Wax on, I wax your ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I like how they did that. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, they all essentially meet up in uh, Atlantic city for this tournament. There was a quote, I'm going to put this in conjunction with the, one of my favorite quotes. Okay. Um, 
So uh, earlier in the in the film, uh, Vincent asks Eddie, "Like you religious?" And he res he responds, "Me. Um, I, I get high on the on the man upstairs." Oh yeah. And I only bring that up now because um, when he gets to Atlantic City and like walks into the tournament space, <laughs> do you hear the organ playing? Mm -mm. They do this bird's eye view of the space with all the pool tables and like, oh, seats yeah, on the yeah. side. And then they're playing an organ. And I'm just like, oh, wow, they really brought back the church theme in this one. Huh? <laughs> like, this is his church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I noticed that as well. Um, it was, um, yeah, it's kind of religious. For, it's a religious re re uh, awakening for him, I guess, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Come back I mean, to you think about redemption, like a big theme in the Bible, redemption and all that stuff. So, like, that's I don't know if that really is redemption for him, but it's his comeback. You know, I don't know if that was intentional, Scorsese, but um, and I, I really like how they didn't face off in the final, in the final, like that would have right. been predictable, right? Um, but when they do face off, yeah, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't recognize at the time that he was hustling him, but then I was like, I did recognize at the time there was like some of the shots he missed that Eddie, uh, that Vincent missed in the game. I was like, dude, like you've been hitting shots 10 times harder than that. And it turns out he had the hustle. Well, not really the hustle. He was just, he, he paid, he, he bet against himself, <laughs> which is, hmm. which is, which is interesting. Like what? Dude. We also don't get a, we don't get told like what the the payout for this tournament is. So yeah, I mean I don't know. Look, I mean I get it. The ultimate thing is to try to get as much money as possible, but I don't know if I bet against myself. I yeah, I, I I don't know. At this stage, like right, you're thinking, okay, Eddie was teaching him how to like stay under the radar so that people don't have him right. they don't target him or they don't avoid him when they want to play. But like at this stage, you've already kind of run through Atlantic city. <laughs> yeah. They kind of know who you are by that point. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, as a, as a competitor myself, I mm. would not, not have done that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I, I know I wouldn't have done it. It's like, it's like, it's like he flip flopped, right? Like all he wanted to do in the beginning was win, which right. I guess is the point. And then he finally understood Eddie's lessons, but like, Wrong time, bro. <laughs> yeah, you could have done that earlier. Oh. Yeah. Not when all the money's on the line. So there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but like, I, I get it. Like in poker, bringing it back to poker, like a lot of these like guys that play in tournaments that are like professional, like professional poker players, they'll tell yeah. you like the money, the money's in the the home, like the the cash game. It's not in the tournaments, right? Right. Um, so. I don't know if that's like a, a apt parallel to make, but well, I can I see. I, I mean, I can understand the sometimes you have to play um, hurt or lame in order for to make people kind of. It's kind of. I mean, in basketball they do it all the time. George, how many times you have a basketball player pretend like, "Oh, my ankle's not feeling so good today," but I'm gonna go and put up fifty on. Uh, yeah, I've seen tennis players do that shit too. It's annoying. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, I don't know if this is like the – yeah, this is uh, – we're getting towards the end of the film here, but I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to start talking about, you know, I have a what the fuck moment that oh, I wow. want to talk about and like quotes or what, you know. Yeah, go for it. Let's, um, let's, uh, let's dive on into the questions. I mean, oh, sorry. So my, my minor what the fuck moments are – Tom Cruise's accent and his hair. Um, but my major one that I want to talk about is we don't get to see the final game. Yeah, that that was my big what the fuck moment too. I was like, don't freeze. I don't want to freeze. <laughs> it was like the 80s cop out. I was like, I'm, we don't have an I'm ending. back. I'm back. Yeah. What the, man, what the. So brings, I mean, that kind of. Justifies my question up front, which was, "Where's the third one? Where's the third one?" You know what that reminds me of? Uh, Rocky, 
2. Oh. <laughs> the end of Rocky 2 when they're just sparring. Yeah. Ching. But at least in like, well, they don't actually tell us who wins that either in Rocky 3. Right. But they, re they, they replay that scene in Rocky 3 and they freeze and then like it's just R Rocky with a bruised eye getting home after that. But that's why we needed a sequel just to see who's, uh, I don't know, who's a little light in the wallet. Yeah. I mean, that would, I mean, that's, that's a coward's way out, man. You got to come up with the ending. Anyway, so that was my what the fuck. You, you got any? Um, I think that was really, I mean, that, oh, 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 oh. Uh, you kind of mentioned this already, but my what the fuck moment was when Newman walks in on her laying in the bed with nothing but her underwear on. I'm just like, what? And she's like, what? I ain't got, I'm not naked. Yeah, I'm like, girl, seriously? Nick, yeah, Nick, Nick. I just didn't understand yeah. that whole thing. And then, like, he's like, don't play games with me. Like, I'm your, like, business partner. And she's like, don't flatter yourself. Like, then why are you half naked when the guy busts in? The anyway. Uh, I had a question, though. <clears throat> So, and maybe this kind of segues into our who who could have been in this movie thing, but um, did because Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, she was kind of like the it girl for a lot of movies in the eighties, but then she just disappears at some point. And my question is, did Julia Roberts come by and kick her in the head off the corner? Kick her off the corner? Because I feel like Julia Roberts could have been in this movie easily. Well, based on a pretty woman, I suppose, yeah. Feels like this was like written for her and she, or because, I mean, there's a lot of Julia in, in a lot of these scenes. I mean, it's a little grittier than I'm used, I'd be used to with her. What are you talking about? Pretty pretty woman's not gritty. But, but even pretty, but it's, but it's, it's really not. And I know she's supposed to be a prostitute, but like it's not gritty. Pelican brief like, is not gritty enough for you. No. Well, we we did one. All, my best friend's wedding was like, I was where I was like, oh shit, this is pretty fucking raw for her. Yeah. All right. Um, I forget there was another one, maybe Aaron Brockovich, but yeah. So. Yeah. I don't. I don't know, man. She looks like. I mean, I feel like she. She stole Mary Elizabeth's career. She like basically just came and said, "I got it," and just moved her off the spot and said, "I, I got it. Don't worry about it." Well, that's what I'm doing right now. Is so actually, oh, you might be right because this movie. <laughs> this movie is. Is this movie 1987 exactly? I think so. 86. Okay, this movie is 1986. Mm -hmm. And Julia Roberts' first credit is 1987. Uh, and Mystic Pizza was 1988. Mm -hmm. Steel Magnolia's 89, Pretty Woman 90. I mean, Flatliners, Sleeping with the Enemy, Hook. Hook. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, right, she was Tinkerbell. Pelican Brief, like, yeah. So she, and then this movie was 86. Let's see what happens after 86 for this woman. You might be right, my friend. She started oh. in 82. She had Color of Money, Slam Dance, The January Man. She was in The Abyss in 89. Mm. Um, and Robin Hood 91, one of my favorite movies of all time. Prince of Thieves. Mm. Yeah, but there's like not a lot of recognizable stuff. Uh, to me, Perfect Storm in 2000. That's a big jump. Yeah, man. You, 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 that's a... That's a Pertinent question to ask, my friend. Well, it's just well. There you go. It's sad because um, you know, she was a decent actress. She's not, you know, she was a decent actress. I mean, listen, she she's good in this. Yeah, she was but, very good. Yeah, it, it's just the character itself was like strange. It wasn't her performance. Her performance was fine. Right. Um, yep. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, hmm. Well, I, I give you. I'll give you another what the fuck. Mm. The song Werewolves in London. <laughs> Have you listened to the lyrics to that shit? 
No. I don't know why I didn't say this. Um, first of all, what the fuck does that have absolutely nothing to do with the movie? Um, and two, the fucking lyrics. I saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand. Walking through the streets of Soho in the rain, he was looking for the place called Li Ho Fuchs for to get a big dish of beef chow mein. What? I'm not even going to say anymore. It's all. I don't understand what that means. Nope. Um, and then the, the chorus is, ah, ooh, werewolves in London. Like, anyway. <laughs> That that to me is that deserves a what the fuck to me. Yeah, I mean that's uh, it's a great song. It's not appropriate for anything. Warren Zevon. Yeah, I don't know who that is either. And, and I had I had the, the, the misfortune of watching the music video for it as well, which is the guy looks like such a douche. Um, anyway, well, just so you understand, um, two of his other songs. One was called Lawyers, Guns, and Money. And the other one was called Rolling the Headless. So, so were, those, were, were those for young guns and I have no idea. Like Sleep Sleepy Hollow. His third album, Excitable Boy, which is well known. I had never heard of this dude. Yeah, we don't have to talk about him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, you're just making, giving them, giving them time. I don't oh, yeah. Shit's up. Yeah, his his songs are hilarious. My shit's yeah. fucked up. Um, do you, any, any, do you have any favorite quotes? Oh uh, yeah, I had one, um, which um, when um, Eddie is talking to. Uh, uh, bonehead inside the car and he says to win you gotta have brains and you gotta have balls you got too much of one and not enough of the other mm -hmm. I, I thought that was the quote that sums up the whole movie basically maybe yeah yeah probably mm. um i i mean i liked the one uh, from the the narration to open up the film um mm -hmm. and i feel like this is Probably something similar to this was said in Rounders, but um, but but for some players, luck itself is an art. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. But my all-time favorite is Carmen. While uh, in that one scene where he's playing Grady and he's like about to ruin the, he's supposed to like lose all the matches, but he's like playing well. She says, "You ruin one more game, you're gonna be humping your fist for a long time." <laughs> Humping your fist. All right. Okay. That's possibly the best writing in a film I've ever heard. Yeah, she should have maybe whoever wrote that should have they should have a like a an Oscar category for just best lines in a movie. Perhaps. Yes. And then well, I always goes back to my see you said that and immediately what pops in my head is we talked about this with bodyguard. I've been watching you from across the room all night. Well, go back over there. Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> Top winner, number one, history of film. Uh, anyway. All time. All time. <laughs> um, so, uh, if you, uh, are you ready for the questions? Are you ready to? Yeah, the let's, yeah, let's do that. So, I, I actually thought. Um, we could go back to some of our original questions for this one because I think our, our our original question could Tom Hanks be in this film? In what role and would he make it better? Um. Wow. Well, Tom Cruise. I mean, Tom Hanks could be in this movie two ways. Yes, he can. The older Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Hanks. Could be Eddie. Mm -hmm. The younger Tom Hanks could could be uh, whatever his name was. Vincent. Vincent. Yeah. Um, I I would like him better as Eddie, probably because 
I don't know. How, I mean, like he's got some comical edge to him, his younger self. But there was there's a true science to being the dick on screen. <laughs> and I don't know he. It's the one thing Tom him. Hanks can do. Oh, that's <laughs> the one thing that Cruz can do. He can be dick. Um, I, I I I agree. Um, essentially, yes, I agree. He could have played both. Mm. Uh, as usual, a different film. Mm. I, I think it's a, I, but I don't think he would be better than. Um, no, he, he could do Eddie, but I don't think yeah. he would be better than Paul Newman. Paul Newman is absolutely amazing in this film. Yeah, um, and, and, and they were the both in, in the same. They were both in um, in. Um, they were in the movie together. What's the movie? Uh, Road to Perdition. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to force Tom Hank, younger Tom, Tom Hanks into the Vincent role. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to, trying to imagine, like it, it, it would be more playful. He'd be less yes. of a dick and just like just more of a, a slacker. Yeah. Um, and I think that could still work. Uh, because I just, I, I mean, maybe that was the point, but I really, just really didn't like. I thought Cruz really overplayed and I didn't really like him in this film. So, uh, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to force Tom Hanks in there, <laughs> but he could play both roles. Absolutely. If it's better, that's another question. Yeah. I don't know if it'd be better. I think it would be good. Very good. But I mean, Newman at his pro this, I think this was, this was his mount, like like one one of his better films, yeah. And sometimes we ask the question like, uh, who else could be better in this role? Because we find other casting information, like oh, these people were considered. I didn't find any of that. Mm, um, me either. So I don't know if that was just no, well, because Paul Newman, I guess, came to Scorsese for this, so it was his film. But you could have other people cast possibly for uh, Vincent and Carmen. So I don't know. Anyway. I didn't find that. Um, okay, since we did the old, the original OG actor question, let's do the OG music question. Uh, okay. Could Tears in Heaven be in the soundtrack, uh, and in what scene, and would it make it better? Uh, it definitely could be in the movie. I just, um, I mean. That's a hard question because I think I wouldn't want to put it in the movie as like because normally we do it sometimes it's tongue in cheek. I don't want to do that with this this moment this, because I think because Clapton's already on the soundtrack and I don't think it would make sense for him to do one song that's tongue in cheek and one that's not you know so. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's maybe in the background, like when he's dancing with his girlfriend. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's a good question, but I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, there's so much background music in this. Maybe it could work. I, I said no, mm. but we've already got Clapton in here, and I, now I'm thinking – um maybe the, the 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 question should be rephrased oh 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 because i'm a huge fan of tears in heaven so that's i mean that's really why we started asking this question it was it was more to be tongue-in-cheek but maybe the question should be could eric clapton have a song could one of eric clapton's oh. songs be in this soundtrack just to broaden it and like we have more things to that's uh, a that's a that's not a bad idea I think that would be um, that would be cool to kind of see whether what other Clapton works might fit. Like, are we better? Are we better at music composition and uh, or music scoring? Yeah. So, with that being said, did you have a song in mind? I didn't. I thought about that question while we were <laughs> talking about the film. Um, 
I think Layla could be in this. Which one? Oh. The original or the acoustic version? <laughs> the acoustic version. I mean, I are, you, are you, 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 you saying Carmen is Layla in this situation, and uh, and Eddie is Eric Clapton, and Vincent is George Harrison? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean. It's either that or I shot the sheriff. I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I know a lot of um, Eric Clapton stuff. Uh, uh, was it uh, Girl? Oh, was it something? Something in ashtrays or Bell Bottom Blues would probably fit in here. How about anyway. cocaine? Well, that for uh, for Tachiro's character, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. um uh, that was Crossroads. My bad. Um, yeah, so for the next one, we'll I'll, I'll have a song for the movie, an Eric Clapton song for the movie. But in the it's meantime, good. what's your favorite song in the soundtrack, and which one do you think encompasses the story? Um, I mean, my favorite song that's in the soundtrack is "One More Night." Phil Collins is why I'm. Why I called it out, I was a little annoyed for a second there. Um, but the one that I think probably fits the movie, um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I had to look at lyrics to answer this one, so. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think. Actually, the one that makes sense for the movie is the Clapton song, uh, and it's in the way that you use it. They do play it twice. <clears throat> I think it's in the same at the same pool hall. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, did I look at that? I think I did. It's, it's in the way that you use it. Uh, I must have looked at those lyrics. Um, it comes and goes. It's the way that you use it. Um, yeah. So what I thought about those lyric lyrics were, um, and I'm not sure if this was actually written for this movie, because it talks about Eric Clapton collaborating with the um, composer, who's a previous band uh, artist. I forget the name. Um, Robbie Robertson. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do they work together? I don't think they were in a band together, but in the way it's in the way that you use it, it comes and goes. You know, so like the, your skill, right? As a pool player, it comes and goes where like um, Eddie talks about that. Like sometimes the yeah. balls don't roll for you. Yeah. Um, it's no way easy. You know, feel, feelings will show. You don't ever abuse it. Don't let it go. I mean, you're weak. Nobody's weak until some somebody's strong. I, 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 I you, could, you could make it um, match up to the storyline. So... Again, that's why I'm not sure if it was written for this film. Well, the fact that Robbie Robertson and him both are credited as songwriters on this song, I feel like yeah, it's probably because of this movie. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Robbie Robertson was part of the band. There you go. Yeah, the band, yeah. Um, so I really liked Standing on the Edge of Love, B.B. King, but again, I was talking about how blues really fit into this atmosphere yep. better than some of the other music, and it's B.B. King. Um, and for encompassing, um, who owns this place? Don Henley, uh, of the Eagles. Mm. Um, and... I don't know. Well, he's got parts of a song. Again, I'm not sure if this was written for the movie too, but he's got part part of the song's called it says push pull push pull push pull, right? Mm. <laughs> the movement of the cue. Um I mean, you know there ain't no end to a man's desire to steal your water, steal your fire, snakes in the garden, apples on the tree, all this looks easy, no this is free. Um you might get lucky, got the world to win, need a little failure to thicken your skin that just a little more 
literal. Everybody's talking. They promise you the moon. It's made on paper, but you find out pretty soon. To me, like that kind of talks about this guy's desire to to be the best. Yep. Um, snakes in the garden, apples on the tree is the whole Adam and Eve thing, and tempted, tempting, tempted by evil or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then need a little fear to thicken your skin, which is what Eddie kind of preaches, like to like throw games to win more money in the end. Um, and you have to just lose to you learn from losing. And all this kind of, I don't know, like, to me, it kind of fit in. Um, mm -hmm. monkey, monkey see, monkey do, you're watching him and he's watching you. I feel like that's the relationship of Eddie and, and Vincent right there. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. teaching him, he's watching him, but he's also, uh, Vincent's also watching Eddie and learning all that stuff, so, you know. Um, I kind of put those pieces together and thought that that was the, the best song for that question. Mm. Okay. You're wrong, but okay. No. Yeah, I'm very never wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. Well... Um, final questions. Uh, what did you rate the? What did you rate the film and soundtrack, track list? Um, you know, I I just don't know if I would watch this movie again. Um, and if I did, it would really just be for Paul Newman. Mm. Uh. That being said, I guess I'm not a huge pool fan, so <laughs> that doesn't hold interest for me either. And like like I said, Tom Cruise is kind of over overdoes overdoes it. So, and and if you want a little tr more trivia, did you know that this is the only Scorsese film that Robert Ebert did not review favorably? It got oh, really? two thumbs two thumbs down for Ebert and Siskel. So I guess I'm with them on that. Oh, so thumbs down or. What number are we looking at? Six. 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 Wow. It's, it's just eh. the only thing that keeps it up is is Paul Newman for me. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. I. To be honest, right almost from the beginning, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> like I didn't hate it, but I also was the same as you. Like. Tom Cruise was just too much. It was too much over the top stuff. And um, Newman, like, I really wish they had a, he had a better film to be in because he was really good in it. Um, I'd probably give it a six and a half. And the only reason why I'm giving it the half point is because. Uh, it was like because there were some other good characters, John Turturro and and uh, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. But, so. I, but I feel like I like this movie more than you, and you giving it a six, you giving it higher than me. Yeah, I don't know. It works, man. It's the mysteries of life, my friend. The mysteries of life. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, I, and uh, just I, we probably should have prefaced the whole episode with this, but we did select this film from a a list that we saw online of top soundtracks, top yeah. fifty soundtracks, and this was in there. Yeah, um, it, was it does, 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 that, does that does this fall into the top fifty? I, I no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. This this is. Top seventy-five, maybe, maybe. I just don't think there's enough meat on the bone for it to be considered. Yeah. Well, that's right. We're not, we talk about a film like uh, Forrest Gump, which had like thirty-five songs on it. Like that, almost it's all a lot of great songs, but almost seems like overkill. Yeah. Um, versus versus like a Big Chill, which has like twelve, maybe fourteen. I think a nice sweet spot is anywhere between 10, 15 songs, right? 
Because anything else after that, it's like weird. It's like too much. Then it's a music video. <laughs> yeah. So. so. With the exception of Forrest Gump, probably. I mean, we, we've done other movies with very substantial, uh, Goodfellas, very substantial yep. track lists. Yep. So, um, yeah. I, I feel like the... Um, the last movie we did, which was um, the Super Mario Brothers, was perfect when it comes to the soundtrack. Yes, and it was a different beast, right? Because a lot of the music, other music in there was from the game. Right. And you had to leave space for that. So if you just did too many, pulled in too many other songs, you, you lose that. You lose yep. the magic. So, yep. but yeah. So Hollywood, if you're looking for the template, there it is. There it is. Two Italian brothers in overalls. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so uh, what's up, man? Uh, you got your uh, contest cooking still? And yeah, let's let's get a live update. Um, I did make the quarterfinals, um, which is a group, uh, another group stage. There's a, a bunch of other groups, but I am currently sixth out of eight people in my group. So, for the uh, opening only, act, right? For the opening act. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but we're only twenty-seven hours into the quarterfinals. It's gonna be, I don't know, eight to nine more days. But yeah, this is probably the biggest thing I've ever done. So. Looking for everyone's help. Uh, I don't know if I could just do the opening act.com forward slash 2023 forward slash Chris dash Saunders. Yeah, type all that in. Uh, um, that's where you can vote for me. Um, if I do win this opening act contest, I'll be performing on October 14th at the Prudential Center in, in front of tens of thousands of people. Um, and right now, the acts that are up there so far are Maroon 5, Kelly Clarkson, and One Republic. So I need some help. Help a brother out. Help a brother out, everyone. You heard him. And here's the URL. Do it. There's the URL, everyone. So um, for those who are listening, Again, it's opening opening act dot radio dot com slash twenty twenty three slash Chris Chris Des Saunders. And if you are um, actually looking to, uh, if you can't remember all that, then um, you can go to Chris's uh, IG and. Find his the link there in his bio. Yeah, I got posts. I got my bio. Follow me. Get Follow me. They calling me. Uh, um, I have nothing going on for the for the first time in quite a while. I have literally nothing going on. You tend um, to say that, I, and then you have actually that's yeah, not true. Yeah, here it comes. Uh huh. But I don't. Um, so I'm. I'm actually doing a. A friend of mine talked me into doing. Um, coming on there. Uh, they're they're kind of like coaches, for like people in entertainment, and uh, she talked me into coming on her class. Her next coming to our next online class and doing like a Q and A kind of a thing. So. Um, it's actually really good, like a good seminar. It's a very good seminar. It's like I attended one just to see what it was like. She had a good turnout, good, you know, you know, all kinds of producers and directors and stuff. It was really cool. Um, I'll have it posted to my um, Instagram later on today. Um, And um, if you want to check it out, you know, stop by, uh, check it out. 
my I'm at the Darren Jenkins on Instagram. I mean, your events and well, it's called events are usually pretty informative. Uh, great place to meet people and, and learn stuff. So I highly recommend people check this stuff out, man. Yeah, we had a really good one. Oh, you uh, should have. Uh, no, you should have came. It was um, we got um, this VFX AI company from Canada to come and talk about the use of AI in films. And that's a hot topic, obviously, mm -hmm. for a lot of people right now. And, you know, so if you've seen any, any of the new Marvel platform TV shows or movies, They've done most of them, so mm -mm. Um, it was good. It was a good conversation. Everybody got to ask their questions and stuff. It was cool. So, um, other than that, that's it. I have nothing watching TV. Well, um, getting, I'll, getting I'll, 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 I'll fill in for Darren. Um, come check me out on September twelfth, Tuesday, September twelfth at eight thirty at Pete's Candy Store. And I just booked November 17th, 7 p.m. at the Delancey. Boom, bop, bop, bop. And then hopefully oh. I'll be performing on October 14th at Prudential Center. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. And you can, again, for any of this information, you can go up to his Instagram and follow him there, send him a DM, say hello. You know, come out because the show actually Pete's Candy Store is actually pretty, pretty cool venue. Yeah, I, I, I um, randomly came across a. I was trying to learn some covers and was thinking about "Don't Start Now" by Dua Lipa and yep. noticed on her music video and on YouTube that she shot part of the video at Pete's Candy Store. So, oh yeah, that's right. Yep. So me do a leap of like like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's these right there. When's your album come when you when's your dual album coming out? Dual Saunders. Dual Saunders, yeah. Chris Chris Lipa. <laughs> Chris <Lipa. laughs> uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Keep keep you posted. Yeah. All right. okay. well, well, I guess that wraps it up, huh? Mm-hmm. Cool. Another one in the books. We got some more coming up for you soon. Um, I think we're, we're. What was the? What was it? not trading places? Um, what was the one we're going? Uh, we're I want to do Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. I want to uh, do Moana, Barbie. We got some stuff we want to do. So. Yeah, and you can always, if you have a film and that has a great track list, you can always suggest films and or come on you know suggest the film and maybe we'll choose you to come on and be a guest um be sure to follow us at the tracklist podcast on instagram and on facebook and soon coming to threads as soon as we get around to doing that at some point down the road <laughs> but at the very least come check us out on instagram we're always posting something interesting so there's that word all right well another one in the books and um good suggestion thank, Even thank you thank uh, you up rocks or whatever it was uh, up rocks yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah 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 let's not use that list again um some of our movies we've done are on that list a, a lot of them and, and, beverly, Hill, and beverly hills cop is on that list so you know which means that they're all just that. listening to our podcast and doing that that's all they're doing well, that'd be the smart thing to do <laughs> we are the experts yeah, yeah you want to know right. what movies to watch you should be listening to our podcast so there's thanks. that Th thanks thanks for listening y'all Thanks, everybody. And uh, again, be sure to follow us on the Tracklist podcast and Instagram and Facebook. Till then, I'm Darren Jenkins. I'm Chris Saunders. And this is The, the Tracklist. Track
see you guys on the flip side.